These three graphics cards are providing an absolute ton of price to performance, especially on the used market these days, but they've been out for several years now, so they're definitely due for some updated benchmarking. Let's get into it. Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf. Today we're going to be checking out the RX 560, RX 570, and the RX 580 and testing them with some 2020 gaming action. And if you're new here and you want to see other PC hardware videos just like this one, then hit the subscribe button down below and also that notification bell that way you never miss an episode. But yeah, let's check out these GPUs. Before jumping straight into the benchmarks, there's timestamps down in the description if that's all you're interested in, by the way. I want to quickly introduce these cards, talk about our testing rate for the day, and even discuss the current market prices of these cards. For today, the RX 560 model that I have here is the XFX single fan that's rocking 4GB of VRAM. For our RX 570, this one is from ASRock and it's the Phantom Gaming X 8GB edition. And finally, for the 580, this one is from MSI and it's the Armor MK2 8GB model. Now, before we proceed further, yes, I do realize that these are all from different third party manufacturers. It would have been a little bit more accurate of a test if I could find graphics cards from the same lineup and brand, but just know that this isn't going to be a 100% controlled lab experiment so there's going to be a little bit of a difference but for today's video i think we'll be perfectly fine moving on i do want to talk about the current market prices both on the used and new markets for all three of these gpus to determine my average price for used i took the last 20 completed purchases on ebay and averaged them all out and for the new market i found whatever the lowest price that you can easily find on amazon and newegg without any crazy deals now one thing to note is that i didn't grab these prices based off of these exact model of gpus such as the msi armor r RX 580, but rather I simply just typed in RX 580, RX 570, and RX 560. With that being said, the average used market price that I found for the RX 560 was around $69, and then on the new market, this exact model is actually sitting at $80, but after that, they're around $115. Moving to the RX 570s, the average price of the eBay used completed auctions was $88, and over on the new markets, I found the easy low price to be $135. Finally, for the RX 580, on the used market, you'll find it for an average of $116 and on the new market it's still actually up around $165. Before even getting into the testing, just with that price data alone, on the used market the RX 570 is only a couple dollars more than the 560 so that's more than likely going to make the 560 obsolete but then there's almost a $30 difference from the 570 to the 580 so the 570 may very well be in a sweet spot already. Now for our testing rig today, the motherboard that we have is an MSI X570A Pro 16GB of Corsair Dominator Platinum RGB RAM clocked at 3000MHz, and the CPU that I decided to go with is a Ryzen 5 3400G. I feel like the 3400G is honestly the most realistic option that you would pair with any of these GPUs. I could have ran this testing with something like a 9900K, and that would have eliminated any CPU bottlenecking issues, but those are just unrealistic numbers, so I'd rather show you numbers that you're actually going to see with one of these GPUs. I also like the 3400G for today because there are indeed a ton of people that bought a Ryzen APU over the last year without a graphics card at all, and now that they saved up some extra money, these three graphics cards, especially the 570 and 580, would make for a great addition to their gaming PCs. And finally, with all that out of the way, I decided to benchmark every single game with the exact same settings, and I based those settings off of the middle performer GPU, the RX 570, having the same settings with all these GPUs will allow you to see the exact performance difference from GPU to GPU. Starting with our eSport titles as normal, we'll get to our newer AAA games afterwards. The first game I benchmarked was Fortnite and in 1080p and pro settings, you can see the expected performance curve of average FPS. Next up, I tested CSGO, also with pro settings, which is pretty much just all low settings. And for this one, as we all very well know, CSGO is more CPU dependent than anything. And I actually got pretty much the exact same results with the 570 and the 580 because of the CPU bottlenecking, which is to be expected with this game. Rainbow Six Siege followed up next, and in 1080p and high settings, these results actually surprised me a bit. There's definitely an increase of performance from GPU to GPU, but I didn't really expect the RX 560 to perform that poorly compared to the 570. For our last esport related title, we have PUBG, and here's where things got pretty frustrating. This was my very last benchmark out of all 30 of these tests, 10 games times 3 GPUs, and I'm pretty sure my RX 580 died when doing this very last test out of nowhere, and I couldn't grab 
the benchmarking data, sorry about that for this one. Getting into our AAA titles, we have Borderlands 3. Using the built-in benchmark in 1080p in medium settings, here are the results. As you can see, 1080p high would be better for the 570 and 580, but you'll definitely want to drop the settings for the 560. Gears 5 was up next. Here in 1080p in medium settings, again, we got pretty much the exact same thing. You could bump up the settings on the 570 and the 580 a bit, but you'll definitely want to lower the settings for the 560. Next up, we have the Division 2. I have dedicated benchmarking videos to most of these games, by the way. And also using the built-in benchmark in 1080p in medium settings, we got a very similar curve of performance that we did with the previous two titles. Call of Duty Modern Warfare followed up next. I was in the middle of my testing when Warzone came out, so I didn't benchmark during that mode. Sorry, this is just a normal team deathmatch game. And in 1080p with normal settings, aka medium, here are the results I got for this. Getting towards the end of this benchmarking one, I decided to throw in Apex Legends because I almost never benchmarked this one. And here we got very similar results with all three cards, still a solid progression of performance, but this tells me that this game is also relying much more on the CPU. For the last benchmarking game, we have Monster Hunter World, and in 1080p with medium settings, the RX 580 was actually the only one that was able to maintain 60 FPS. Alright, so with all that data and the data from the pricing section, the RX 560 with its current used market price is kind of hard to sell at this point, but there's absolutely a ton of value with both the 570 and the 580. If you're looking for the absolute best bang for your buck, pure performance kind of GPU, I think the most value is in the RX 570. The RX 570 is only a few bucks more on average than the 560 and almost $30 less than the 580. So if you're looking for every last bang for your buck, that's probably the card to choose. However, if you do have a few extra bucks for more performance, the RX 580 here in 2020 is also rocking an absolute ton of value. Well, that wraps up my performance testing here in 2020 for the RX 560, RX 570, and the RX 580. As always, drop a comment down below about what you thought of this testing or what other GPUs you want to see me test next and after that feel free to head on over to one of these two videos if you haven't seen them yet definitely hit that subscribe button and make sure you're following me over on twitch because i'm streaming over there at least two times per week and i'm even starting to live streaming my pc builds